Hello everyone, this is Kenny Brony from Cambridge Tech and in this tutorial, we are going to learn about Pandas. So here I am on the Pandas official website and I'll leave the link in the description below. And we do have a little bit of information over here, which I recommend you always go through some of these bits. So it says Pandas is a fast, powerful, flexible and easy to use open source data analysis and manipulation tool built on top of python programming language so this is just a bit of information and trust me um, it has a lot of support and once you are working with data analytics data science you are definitely going to run into pandas one way or the other so inside of my github repo i have this pandas repository over here and when you click on this once again i'll leave the link in the description below and when you click on this code icon over here you can download the zip file. So once you have the zip file downloaded, you definitely do the extraction and you can start working with it. So here I have this already downloaded from my GitHub repo. Once again, the link is in the description below. And we are going to work with this in the Jupyter environment. And if you don't have Jupyter installed on your system, don't worry, I got you covered. Now, I recently released a video on how to download and install Jupyter Notebook onto your Windows machine. So here you have, once again, I'll leave the link in the description below and you can follow through to do that simple installation process. So back into this, we are going to open the Jupyter Notebook. So we'll go into the folder and in here, inside of the address bar over here, I'll just type in CMD and I'll press enter. So this is going to open up my command prompt window and let me just zoom up a little bit. So in here, I'm going to type in Jupyter and I'll do Jupyter Notebook and press enter. So here we are. So right at the back of this, what this basically does is it runs the Jupyter Notebook server at the background where you can have access to it on this interface we have over here let me close this tab so in here we are going to work with pandas and i have this notebook over here prepared for you and normally what i usually do is i normally would want to have a duplicate of this so i'll click on that and click on duplicate and yes i'll click on duplicate so i have two and it is a copy and i would want to rename this so i'll check this and click on rename and i'll call this test So I have this test over here and it is within this test that you are going to work. Later on, if you want to try on your own, you definitely have this intact. So here we are with pandas. So the question most people would definitely ask is what is pandas? And I'm saying pandas is a Python library used in data science and data analytics. Now you have functions and methods that are used for exploratory analysis and manipulation of data or data manipulations as i have it over here so why learn pandas and why would you want to use pandas in the first place so pandas allows data scientists to Im import analyze and explore data and we are going to see examples of such as we move along now pandas is used for data pre-processing especially in data cleaning most of the time whichever data set you may be given or you are working with there should be some kind of exploratory or some processing or pre-processing activity that needs to be performed on that data set. So for instance, if you have some missing data or some null values, how then do you fix that? And we are going to use pandas and I have practical examples over here. We are going to see. So pandas provides data scientists with some statistical inferences on data. And this is very helpful when you are working with a very large data set. And last but not the least, it's very easy to learn just as I did with NumPy some time ago. So there's a pandas official website. I have this link over here. So once you click on this, it takes you to this website. We've already come here at the beginning of this presentation. So you can read through the documentation. And when you click on this, it gives you um, a bit of information over here. But let's see how we use pandas. So first of all, we need to install pandas. Okay. So I'm going to open up a command prompt window. And I'll type in CMD over here. And it is very simple. We just have to do a pip install. Once again, let me just zoom up. 
um a little bit so pip install and the library name is pandas as we have it over here now i already have it installed so definitely it's going to tell me requirements already satisfied so this will run and of course you need internet for this particular activity okay so here we are with as you can see it says requirements already satisfied that means i have pandas in there so i'm going to close this window remember our development server is running at the background we don't have to close this so now that we have pandas installed we then need to import for us to use it and it's very simple we have to do import and the name of the library is pandas good so now when we do import pandas it is going to work and we are not going to find or have any problems with this but what you normally see people do is something like this import pandas as pd now what this pd does is pd now becomes an alias so instead of typing pandas pandas as we move along we are just going to type pd and it is going to serve the same purpose so in order to run this cell you can click on this run button over here but then there's a keyboard shortcut which in my case is going to be shift enter so i'll press shift and enter and as you can see we have this star showing up over here it shows us as that it is running and once it is complete running you see that it has a number over here so we would want to check the version of the pandas um library that we have installed and we just have to uncomment this one now so we are saying print pd which is the pandas the alias over here dot underscore underscore what you have over here is two underscores version underscore underscore so when i run this you can see that this is the version of pandas i have on my system yours could be different and don't worry anything i'm going to teach here is going to be applicable to what you have all right so in order to understand pandas very well we need to get some theoretical concepts at the very beginning and here we are going to talk about series and data frame so the obvious question what is a series and what is a data frame let's start with series so a panda series is a 1d or a one-dimensional array holding data of any type it is like a column in a table or a matrix so when you have a table you see that items or elements are arranged in rows and columns the rows are the horizontal cross section and the columns are the vertical cross section and for which reason if we are talking about series then it is a one dimensional array holding data and it is like the column so here we have an example of a series so this is like series one and it has some kind of a label over here with data in here and this is the vertical cross section so this is a series this is another series on its own and this is also another series on its own and the next one is a data frame so what is a data frame now when data is multi-dimensional you can see that here the direction is only in one direction so when data is multi-dimensional they are stored in a structure called a data frame if a series is like a column then the data frame is the entire or the whole table so here we have a data frame and basically what this practically means is when you combine two or more series or panda series then we are getting a data frame so here we have the mango series we also had the apple series and the banana series and together combined we are getting something like the fruit data frame good so now let's see how we work with series in pandas so here the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create panda series from a python list and we already know what a list is so let's say we have a variable called data and let's pass in these values so we have one two three and four when i run this yes data is now in our system i'll create a cell beneath this so i'll click on this and click on the plus button over here and now if i'm to run this you see that i have this showing up over here now if i'm to print out the type so i'll wrap data so i'll wrap data in the type method over here and now when i run this we see that yes indeed there's a list 
good so we are going to create a series from this list and it is very simple so let's call this and we are going to use the pandas remember we have an alias that we are using which is pd so now when i do pd dots so i'm going inside of pandas and there's a class in here called series and series is spelled with a capital s remember python is case sensitive so now when i do pandas or pd dot series and inside of the parenthesis i need to pass the data which is this particular list over here now what i want to do is i would want to save this in a variable so i'll say x is equal to pd dot series and whichever thing i have in there and once again when i run it we don't seem to have any problem now let me create a cell beneath this and print out x so you can see that the x we have over here is displaying in a particular structure that is different from what we had over here as a list and that's simply because this is now a series so how then do we know that this is a series once again it's very simple we can also check out the type of x so now when i run this you can see that the data type is now showing us as pandas.core.series.series .series. this simply means that this x data we have over here or we have created over here is a panda series and that's very interesting now one of the things i would want to show is the fact that we have this one two three four over here that's essentially the data or the element we passed in here and now we have this zero one two three the obvious question is where from this zero one two three now this zero one two three is an index so remember python starts its indexing from zero and that's essentially what we have over here so by default whenever we create a series it is going to assign an index to it which starts so whenever we create a series it's going to assign some index to it and it starts from zero however we can change the index if we want and we are going to see them you can see that the index is zero one two three now we can pass in our own index over here so we can bring in index and we'll pass in a list so instead of saying zero one two three remember we have four of them over here so we can do something like monday comma and to you for tuesday and we'll do something like wednesday and finally we'll do a thursday this way so now when i run this and i'll come back to run this you can see that this has now changed to monday tuesday wednesday thursday the index is changing over here and that's essentially what we have done over here so create panda series with index and that's the example i just showed over here so let's make progress now we want to create a panda series from a python dictionary remember the first one or the first example we looked at was with a list so let's say we have another data which is then going to be a dictionary and remember what dictionaries are dictionaries are key value pairs so let's say we have name as the key and the value is going to be my name let's say kenneth and we are going to have another key which is the age and the data i'm going to pass in here is some ends value which i have as 30 and let's say i have email and for email i'm going to pass something like k bruni at gmail.com by the way this is not my real email my email is in my description so this is just some dummy data now when i run this we don't seem to have any problem now if i'm to print this out we have this over here and finally let me also print out the data type so the type of data so when i run this this is of a type dict which is a dictionary good now if i want to create a panda series out of this it is as simple as doing it this way so let's say i have y y is now going to be equal to pd dot series and i want to pass in data so now when i run this yes we don't have any problem over here and if i'm to print out why you can see that we have the keys have been assigned to the index 
and the values are the data or the values inside of what we have over here and so you can see that name is kenneth age is 30 and email is what we have over here as kbrony at gmail.com all right so basically this is what we've done we've looked at series and how we can create series of our own now in most cases you're not going to work with creating series this way but then it is very important we have an idea of how some of these things come about so now let's look at the data frame remember the series is just the column so everything we're doing was just with a particular column but in the case of data frame we are going to create some kind of a table and in order to do so let's have a list so over here i'm also going to say data and inside of this let's have something like one two three and let me just run this and come down here to print out data and that's what we have over here so there's a list we obviously know that now let me create a cell beneath this and come in here and now let's have a variable called z so z is going to be called to pd dot and this time around because i want to create a data frame the class i'm going to call in here is going to be data frame and data frame is in this particular camel case notation so this is a name data starting with a capital d and frame starting with a capital f so when i do data frame this way and pass in my data and now when i run this we don't seem to have any problem now if i'm to create a sub mini this and print out z you can see that we have a little bit of structure over here okay this is um, different from when we were creating our pandas series from the list we have a little bit of structure over here and what i want to do is once again I don't want to check the type of the z we have over here and clearly we can see that it is of type pandas.core.frame.dataframe this simply means that this is a data frame and there are a number of advantages of having a data frame because we can easily manipulate it so this is just one way of handling this but remember i said something like the data frame is like a table and yes this is almost like a table but it is not really the table that you would want to see because it is just showing only one column now we can simply create um i mean a very structured table over here so let me just create in a cell over here and let me have data and this is going to be a list of lists so inside of the main list we have this list within so let's say i have 10 20 and let's say 30 inside of the first list on the second list let me have 40 50 and then 60. so there's a list of lists and let me run this cell. so i'll do a shift enter and let me create a cell beneath this now if i'm to do something like data dot sorry if i'm to do something like x or z is equal to pd dot data frame and passing data this way and run this we don't seem to have any problem if i'm to print out z you can see that there's some structure showing up over here and that's simply because for this first row okay this first row we have 10 20 30 and the second row we have 40 50 60 showing up over here now you can see that we have two rows because that's what we have over here now we can bring in column names we can bring in column names so in order to do so that's also very simple we just pass in extra attributes over here so in addition to the data we can pass in columns and columns is going to be a list so these are the columns we have over here starting from column zero one two so let's say we want to have something like january and feb for february and now i want to have something like march for march so when i run this 
it has been saved and now when i do this we see that we have january february march and this looks very interesting over here now in that same way we can create um, some kind of an index for these ones over here we can create an index and in order to create that index we also need to come in here and um, just as we did for the series we pass in the index over here the index attribute and you can see that we have only two rules over here so we can simply do something like let's say week one for the first row and let's do week two for the second row so now when i run this and come back to come and run this you can see that we have week one showing up this way week two showing up this way and this is looking more of a table because it has that structure you can see that you have these columns and we have these rules and this is the table that we want good and we can now look at this in a very interesting way so here we are we say or so here we are okay we are going to pass in data using the lock method so now when i print out z z shows up this way which is very interesting and very good and let me just create another one because i don't want to um, cause confusion over here so what i then need to do in order to simplify things is i'll just want to recreate this and perhaps so i'll just copy this so i'll do a control c over here bring this in here and i'll get rid of the index i have over here because i want to keep things very simple and let me create a cell beneath this and print out z good so we are back to having our index starting from zero and one now i'm going to use the lock method as i have over here so when i do z dot lock or loc and pass in an index so for instance you have zero one so the next index is going to be two and now when i do two is equal to and inside of a list i can pass in some kind of data and because i have three um elements in here i need to pass the three elements so i can say 100 200 and let's say 300 so now when i run this we don't seem to have any problem let me create a cell beneath this and now try and visualize z now when i print out z you can see that we have this index of two and we have 100 200 and 300 i use 100 200 300 because i want it to be very obvious and that's essentially what we have over here so we are using the lock method to actually grab a particular rule and passing some kind of data and this is very interesting now later on as we move along we are going to see more of the lock method but essentially what the lock method does is we can use the lock method to grab a particular index of a rule so over here we say we are going to create pandas data frame from a python list i think we've already tied on this from a python list so let me change this into a dictionary so from a python dict and we know what dictionaries are so let's say we have data and dictionary is a key value pair so inside of our key let's say we have monday non mandate so you have monday and the value in here let's put this in some kind of a list so we have 10 20 and 30 for monday and let's have tuesday let's have tuesday this way and tuesday let's have something like 100 200 and 300 and the next key value pair obviously is going to be wednesday so for Wednesday, let's have something like 90, 80, and 70. All right, so I run this and we don't seem to have any problem over here. Now let me create a cell beneath this and type in data. And we clearly have our dictionary showing up over here. So we are gonna create a pandas, I mean data frame with this dictionary. And that's also very simple. So let's say we have Y, and Y is going to be called to PD, which is our pandas library dot data frame. Sorry. 
supposed to be a dot data frame and in here we pass in data so when i run this yes we are good to go and now when i decide to print out y i can see that this already has a structure because the keys are now going to be the column names and this is more of a pragmatic way of looking at it the keys are going to be the column names and all these values are going to be under this column because they are assigned to this particular key so you have 20 30 i mean 10 20 30 showing up over here under monday and tuesday we have 100 200 300 and that's what we see over here and finally wednesday we have 90 80 and 70 all right so that's with this now let's look at how we can actually use the lock attribute to return a specific rule and remember the data frame is y over here so if you have to do y dot loc like we saw in the past and bring out the square brackets and pass in an index of zero when i run this it's going to show me the index of zero okay so this particular row is going to show me what i have for this particular row and what do i have for this particular row i have 10 for monday 100 for tuesday and wednesday has 90 and that's exactly what we see over here now if i'm to pass in one we see that we have data for index one so this returns the lock when we use the lock attribute or method and passing an index it returns the data we have in that particular index that's very interesting so that's with the lock now let's say you want to um, return let's say two or more rules so now when i do a comma and two it is going to catch an error because we are not passing things in the right way and i'm actually showing you this because uh, you may run into some of these problems as you move along now the easy way of going about this is to wrap this in another um how do you call it uh, list okay or parentheses so now when i run this you can see that i now have one and this is also returning that kind of like a table so just the first and the second if i'm to pass in let's see zero over here you can see that i have the names of the rules over here and their respective data showing up in here good so this we're just passing in or just trying to find out the particular data in some particular rule what about if you want to see it from the column side of things and that's even more simpler we just have to do something like y dot and the name of that particular column so when i do y dot monday you can see that i have the data sets showing up for monday with their respective index over here so this is the series we kept talking about good then you can see that the name of that particular series is monday so this is one way of doing it and the other way of doing this is to actually do y then inside of this let's say you want to return what we have for tuesday so inside of this it is also going to work and as you can see we have 100 200 and 300 that's exactly what we see over here and that's essentially using there's not um, a pandas thing actually it's just a python way of actually assessing data within pandas so using this method or using the dot and the name of the column depends on what you would want to do with your data but one of the advantages of using this method is the fact that we can select multiple columns at the same time okay so when we do y dot the name of the column tuesday or monday we cannot select multiple columns so over here we want to select let's say tuesday and wednesday i'll just come and copy this Control c and i'll pass in it's this way now when i run it this way we are going to run into an error and this error is kind of similar to the first one we are dealing with when we're trying to grab the rules using the lock and if you remember what we did we just had to wrap this in another square bracket so all that we need to do is to put this in another square bracket like this and once we have this done when i run this you can see that we have taken out 
everything from Monday. Hey, sorry, we've taken um Tuesday and Wednesday data showing up over here. Remember, this is the original data. This is what we use the lock to retain the rules. So this is going to be the first part of this pandas tutorial and we're only scratching the surface in the next video we are going to look at how we work with pandas using a well-established data set an original data set and in this case we are going to use the iris data set now you find value in this video then kindly support my channel by subscribing to Cambrotech. also don't forget to share this video also give it a like so that it will help me grow my channel then also share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at Cambrotech, we say learn programming you can do it Catch you in the next video and bye-bye.